All right, praise y'all. All right, we'll get started. I'm going to go ahead and pray right quick. Father, we just come to thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify your name, oh Lord. Father, we just thank you for another day, another opportunity, another week to be in your presence. We just ask that it be none of us and all of you. Holy Spirit, have your way with us. Teach us, guide us, give us spiritual wisdom and knowledge to know how to operate and maneuver through this fallen world system. We just thank you and we praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We give you our praise, our honor, and our glory. We cancel any demonic assignment against us, against this meeting. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call down fire from heaven to consume any demonic altars that has been built against us. We give you our praise. We give you our honor, our glory. In Jesus' mighty precious name, amen. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And um, some of the stuff we might talk about today, it might be like a little bit of um, um, uh, uh, it might be you might heard me talk about it before. Or it might be catch up on it um, from time past. But like yesterday, I was like, OK, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? You know, when when I come into this. I don't be knowing what, what I'm going to talk about from week to week. It's just what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. And yesterday he had put, you know, talk about Christ crucified in the significance. Now, what that entailed, I didn't really understand until this morning. So I have to depend totally on the Holy Spirit, which is a great place to be because that means it's <laughs> none of me. I couldn't do it. On my own, I need the Holy Spirit to um, give me utterance and things to say. So with that being said, I'm just going to open my mouth and I'm going to go. All right. And um, so the, 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 the thing of this is Christ crucified the significance. Um, let's go to the next. Um, as y'all know, we uh, before we go into this, uh, one thing I do want to say is that you know, a lot of times we wonder, okay, like, what is my purpose on this earth? Like, what, why am I here? Um, and we, we spend a lot of our life wondering these things when it's actually pretty clear why we're here and what, you know, what the purpose is once we begin to, um, once we give our lives to Christ. And last week we talked about being bought by the blood. You know, the blood was a, a, a purchase of us. And so a lot of times the reason, one of the reasons why we don't understand our purpose and our goals and what we should be doing in this life is because we really don't adhere to the fact that we were bought by the blood and that we, our lives are not our own anymore once we become part of the body of Christ. You know, each one of us was, was specifically designed, we were created in the image and likeness of, of Yah, and each one of us here are um unique in our own personal way no two people are the same even identical twins they're not the same because god created us in his image but yet he gave us all a purpose and a goal to fulfill for the kingdom of god and a lot of times we forget that or we've just not been taught that we are just passing through this earth and we have an assignment here and once part of that assignment is knowing who you are part of that assignment is getting reconnected with yah because once we come into the earth we are born into sin and we are our lives are um shaped in iniquity and um we so we're lost until we understand who we are and whose we are. And the only way we can do that is somebody tells us about Jesus and tells us and begins to show us who we really are. And once that whoever it is begins to do that, then you begin to understand that you're from a different kingdom. Okay. You're not from this earth. You're not from, you you're on this earth as a as your body but your spirit your soul is operating from a different kingdom a different world so to speak now with that being said 
as I always say, there's only two kingdoms that operate in this world. No in between, you either operating through one or the other. And it's either by you choosing or by default, because if you're not, if you don't know who Christ is and you don't know who God is and or Yahweh is, and you haven't become a part of the kingdom of God, then by default, you're operating through the kingdom of darkness. You're a part of Satan's kingdom because when you're born, you're born into sin. Satan is pretty much your father at that point. And everything that you're taught before you're uh before you become a new creation, everything that you taught is based on the kingdom of darkness, which is the total reason why we're are doing the series, this series on uh foundations because we're beginning to break up the foundation that was laid in us from birth through sin okay so um and before I go any farther too let, let me try to give a, a small illustration of uh sin transgression and iniquity because sometimes you know we don't really understand what that what that means and what that looks like so let me try to give a small illustration just to just so you can understand when they be like um, you're shaped in iniquity or um, the cup of iniquity is flowing over. Uh, for instance, like with um, with Sodom and Gomorrah, the cup of iniquity had gotten so great in the Sodom and Gomorrah that it merited judgment. OK, so that's where God's judgment came upon that. So what Satan wants to do is he wants to fill that cup of iniquity up. You know, that's his that's his thing. You know what I mean? And then judgment come upon that land, those people. A lot of people uh, go to hell because of the cup, their cup of iniquity being filled up, not just theirs, but just in general. You know, many kingdoms, many um, 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 uh, 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 civilizations have failed and have been destroyed because that cup of iniquity has filled up. Okay, now let's look at this. Say you have a cup. Say you have a cup of water, right? And then that cup of water, let's say you keep putting pebbles. You keep putting little pebbles, little rocks into that cup of water. Eventually, that cup of water is going to, you. it can be a half cup. It can be half full when you first start. But if the more rocks that you put into that cup of water, the more it's going to fill up. And the more it fill up, that water is going to begin to overflow. Now, we were born into sin. Sin is, we, we, we have an idea of what sin is. Now, when we transgress against God, transgression is the, um, the, uh, uh, transgression is the, um, act of sinning. Okay. So every time you trans, let's say, uh, I always, I like to use, um fornication is one i don't know why but that's just because that's something that's not that's not um really spoken against in the church but let's say every time you fornicate that's a transgression against god that's sin right that's you're transgressing against god every time you transgress your cup of iniquity gets fuller if that makes sense um or the water, you can even look at it as this, the water becomes murky. They say if you start off with clear water, each time you transgress against God, iniquity begins to darken and, and, and pollute that water, per se. All right. So the more transgression against God you do, the murkier and darker your water becomes. Now, let's translate that over into the world. That's why we see right now the world is is so dirty and nasty because of the iniquity that's being placed in it from the transgressions against God. You see, that's why Satan, his goal is to get us to transgress against God, to get us to sin against God with homosexuality, with anything that is a transgression against God. And the more that you transgress against God, the fuller that iniquity becomes, all right? And the fuller that iniquity becomes, you begin to see a judgment coming about.
because once that iniquity fall come uh, 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 bubbles over or is 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 begun, you know, just got too great, judgment has to come. So, and and then also we can see this in our own lives. Um, but hold on, let's see. But before I look at before we look at in our own lives, let's look at it in the world. Let's keep looking at it in the world. This is why you see such the the more Satan can get the world to transgress, the more his spirit, the more the spirit, the, the antichrist spirit begins to formulate and begins to um set the scene and set the stage for the antichrist to come on the stage and come on the scene. Okay. This is why you see you didn't see Satan um really uh uh like um in the limelight as much 15, 20 years ago as you do today. It's become today that it's okay. Like it, they they made it to where it's almost okay to worship Satan. You know, they they do it openly. Um he lets it be known that his people worship him. You know, everywhere we look, we see, you know, the darkness. And that's because of the iniquity that's in the world, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah before judgment came down on it. Just like the Roman Empire before it got collapsed and, you know, before things. I'm just saying each civilization has that iniquity that begins to build up. You know, one one of the, one of the things that we miss is that, um, and I'm just flowing. I'm just going. I'm just going to go. Um, is that we we look at uh, Satan and we look at a um, uh, uh, God. We don't see how eternal this is. We don't see the spirit world. We don't see how eternal the spirit world is. We kind of have a, a a small man's mindset of how great and vast the spirit world is and how great and vast God is. We're talking about, and then when we talk about uh, Satan and when we talk about demonic spirits and stuff like that, these things have been around for a very, 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 very long time. Enough to understand how humanity works, enough to understand how we move and operate. This is why there is no way on God's uh, what in God's creation that we could ever come up against Satan in the in the kingdom of darkness without the Holy Spirit. You see, because we can't, we don't understand how the spirit world operate without the Holy Spirit. So we can't see the type of web, the webs, the lies, the deceits. Just think of the things that we've learned over the past months or so in our lives, you know, just think, I, I think back to two or three years ago, half the stuff I didn't know, half the, I didn't even realize just how vast there is a, a spirit world that I cannot see. You know, I, I didn't understand just, just the, the depths of the webs and the lies and the deceit that the enemy has um, infiltrated even in the church. You know, I, I there you couldn't have told me that there was such thing as a religious spirit three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you you couldn't have told me that. And not only could you have not told me that, you couldn't have told me that I was operating under that religious spirit. You see, you couldn't have told me that. I I, I wouldn't have believed. I, whatever. I'm 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 doing what God told me to do. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm living out a godly lifestyle. Okay. I know that may not make sense right now, but hopefully as we go on, it will. So with that being said, there are only two kingdoms that operate in this world. Now, um, you know, the whole, well, well I, the first, the, 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 the title of this at the beginning was Christ crucified the significance was the significance of Christ crucified. Um, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
one of the things I, I forgot to mention is that our purpose, we, uh, let me go back to that. Our purpose, um, uh, we search for our purpose in life. Well, once you become a, a member of the body of Christ, you know, you've been bought by the blood you're paid for, you belong to Jesus. Now, you know, you, your life is not yours anymore. And the more that you release your life to him, the more that he's able to use you to advance the kingdom of God. We are here to advance the kingdom of God. Our purpose is to help those who are lost find their way to the kingdom of God because father does not want to see any of his children perish and go to hell. That hell was not designed for us. It was designed for Satan and his in the demonic spirits that the fallen angels that fell with him. That's what it was designed for. It was never designed for us, but God is a just God and he's just in all his ways. So with him being a just God and when man fail, he, 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 when now when somebody passes and this is why Satan is so hell bent on getting us to sin against God, because now once you pass and you pass on into the next life, the next step is judgment. You have to be judged for what you did here and what you, you the life that you live. Well, God is just. And if you die, you know, in sin and without knowing Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then he has no choice but to your judgment is hell. Okay? Like, he just don't have a choice. He's just in his ways. But he gave us a way, he gave us an opportunity, he gave us a way not to experience hell, not to not to spend eternal life in hell. And that was through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay. So this is why it's important that we preach, you know, Jesus to people. And this is why it's important that we um our our our, our mandate, our purpose is to advance the kingdom of God. That's your purpose. And the more that you release and give yourself to Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to move and work through you, the more power and authority that flows through you. Let, let's okay. Let, okay. Let's look at Matthew 10 and eight right quick. All right. It says, well, let's look at where Jesus sends out the 12 apostles. All right. Matthew 10 and 5. We're going to start at Matthew 10 and 5. I got it on the screen. It says, These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus told them to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, Freely you have received, freely give. This was a mandate from Jesus. This is what he told the 12 disciples, okay? Now, back then, though, it said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But now, through Jesus, everybody can be grafted in to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, you see? So now that's for everybody. Jesus made it possible for everybody to become part of that okay so with that being said the mandate has not changed it's still now it's going into the world and as you go preach die preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely you give everybody is able to do these things everybody is called to do these things. The problem is that we have been um, under a religious spirit because that religious spirit tells us that, no, we can't do those things or that's only for the pastor to do or that's only for a man of God to do when we've all been called to do these things. And when I say that, I say it because 
see religion in the religious spirit, it puts a governor on the things that you can do. All right. Now, when I say a governor, what do I mean by that? Let me explain that. I drive a big, um, this big box truck at work and I do deliveries. Well, this truck is huge. All right. Now the engine in this truck is humongous. All right. This truck has probably, you can probably do maybe it, it, the dashboard says 175 or a hundred and something. I don't know, maybe not 175, but it, it says a hundred and something. However, there's a governor on this truck. What that means is the governor only allows me to go 70 miles an hour. Once I hit like, I think it's 70 or 75, I think it's 70. Once I hit 70, that speedometer goes no further. I cannot go past 70 because there's a governor has been set on that truck to keep me from going past 70. All right. Now, in purposes of that, it may be before my safety or maybe before, you know, just to to um, restrict that the driver from going that far. Well, that's kind of how religion has done in the church, because religion has put a restriction on God to a certain extent. And it's, it, it, it keeps us from understanding just how that we are made in his likeness and that we are spiritual and that we are designed to go past further and beyond just what we can see in this world, just what we can see with our eyes. You see, there's a whole nother world, a spiritual world that we have been fearfully and made in this. We, we are the, some of the, we're the only beings that has been made hum, 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 humanity, human beings that can tap in to both realms and who can live in both realms at one time, if that makes sense. Uh, 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 you know, the only way that Satan is able to do the things that he do in this earth is through a man because we have the authority in this earth. That's why, you know, he uses men to carry out the deeds and the things for the kingdom of darkness. What's the same thing with the kingdom of God? You see, the more that you become like God, the more that you understand who you are and the more that you um, give yourself to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to move through you, the more power and authority will come and exude, will come through you and, um, you'll be able to move in that power in a more uh, predominant way, if that makes sense. Now, you can't think that you're going to be able to, for one, it's not you, but you can't think that you're going to be able to be used to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, and freely you receive, freely you give, if you don't for, for one, live a life of repentance, because this is what repenting, repent, repent, repenting does. Repenting cleanses that cup of iniquity that we talked about. All right. When you repent and you allow Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, not just your personal Lord, not just your Savior, but your personal Lord and Savior, which means Lord over your life. Now, once you take Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you now are cleansed. That cup of iniquity has been cleansed. You see, that cup of iniquity has been building and building and building all the way up until Jesus becomes your personal Lord and Savior. Once Jesus becomes your personal Lord and Savior, that cup of iniquity is cleansed. Okay. Now, what happens is, even though it's cleansed, the water still is still murky. Okay. So there's, there's a cleansing process that needs to continue to happen. Once you, he becomes your personal Lord and savior. This is why the Bible tells us to, um, um, uh, um, to, um, renew our minds. All right. And this is why we're creating a new foundation in our lives to get that water clean and clear. And God begins to take the murkiness and the different pebbles, the different things, even though we're forgiven for all of that, we still continue to repent and ask God to um, 
cleanse us, you know, in order to uh, become vessels for him to use in a mighty way. Now, I, I, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that the best way I can. When I say you have to repent, 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 I'm not saying that, you know, you repent because God has not forgiven you of your sins. All right. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that let's face it. We transgress against God sometimes without even knowing. And because that's the way the world system was set up for us to do. And, you know, that's what I mean. Like when you miss it, you know, you repent for it. And, you know, that that water is cleansed. You know, you're cleansed again. But you don't continue to do that. You don't continue to sin. And people say, well, you know, um, I was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner saved by grace and da, 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 da. Yes, but you don't continue. You, this is, you, you're not a sinner anymore. And you've given, you've been given the opportunity not to sin. Now, how do you, um, how do you, uh, how do you, um, um, how do you uh, make that opportunity? How do you, uh, Holy Spirit, help me out. How do you, um, uh, how do you, uh, okay, let's, let's, let me just keep going. In order to uh, get the, best out of that opportunity you must become closer to Yah the only way to become closer to Yah is to through his word for one in the relationship it's a relationship the only way to grow your relationship is through the word and spending time with our father in Jesus and the Holy Spirit that's it the, the more that you release yourself in your own ambitions, in your own will, in your own, the things that you want to do, the more that that person dies in you, the more that that flesh dies, the more that that flesh dies, the more that your spirit that has been renewed through your um, admission of Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the more the Holy Spirit becomes alive in you and the more the holy spirit is able to use you as a vessel to do things that need to be done within the body of christ and in the world hopefully that's making sense now all right let me let me continue on understanding righteousness all right Righteousness just simply means right standing with God. And this is what Jesus brought and gave to us. Let's see. Let's let's read this. Second Corinthians 5, 20 through 21. It says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. All right. That's one of the, one of the significance of Christ crucified. All right. Was to reconcile, which reconcile means to restore friendly relations between. All right. To conciliate anew, to call back into union and friendship, the affections which have been, alienated to restore to friendship or favor after estrangement see this was us okay we came from god because we were created in his image we are his children all right so before we came into this earth he knew us all right he knew us and the bible tells us this all right he knew us he knew what our specific purpose was going to be on this earth. The only problem is we have a free will. Okay. Now 
He knew us before we came, all right? We are created in his image, all right? We are all his children, all right? But when you're born into this earth, you're, you, you, you're born into this earth separated from him because of Adam's and Eve's transgression and their sin against him. So you're born with a sinful nature which disconnects you from God. So you come into this earth lost, not knowing, not understanding who you are and why you're here. And by default, with that being said, Satan knows who you are and why you're here. But if you don't know why you, who you are and why you're here, he takes advantage of that. So he's taking advantage of every human being that is on this earth until they know who they are and why they're here. The, and the problem with that is by the time you know who you are and why you're here, if you're not taught from a young age, you've become so entangled in his lies and deception and him being your stepdaddy, basically, <laughs> that you don't know what to do. All right. And this is where the proper teaching and the proper foundation comes into play once you do, once you are reconciled through Jesus and the redemption and the blood that he shed on Calvary. Once you are reconciled, now it's time to understand who you are, why you're here, and what your mission statement is. But yet Satan has devised religion and he has devised different things to eat, to stop you from even knowing that once you know who Jesus is, if that makes sense. Example of that is how before we knew the truth about us as um before we really truly understand um whose likeness we were made and the image we was made of we sat and we sat in in church pews and we just you know soaked up a good sermon um you know a good teaching that you know a hooping and hollering here a hooping and hollering there we heard a little bit about jesus here a little bit about jesus there but we was never really taught who we were we was never really shown the power and authority that we have in this earth to operate as the kingdom of God. Okay. All right. I hope I'm making sense. I'm just going, y'all. I'm just going. This is it's just, I got to just let it flow like it's long. I don't. Okay. So look, we were restored back to what? All right. All right. What was God's original plan? And did it change? So what was God's original plan and purpose and intent for our lives? All right. God's original plan was Genesis 1, 26 through 28. He says, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This has never changed. So let's look at this from a different perspective. All right. So look, notice how God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Well, let's look at things 
of how the earth is right now. This was after the fall. Satan began to subdue, multiply, and fill the earth with his nature. All right. But when Jesus died for us, he gave us back the authority to subdue, to have dominion, and to fill the earth. He took the keys that Satan had. He took the, all the dominion. He took all the things to say, the power that Satan had. He took it away from him and gave it back to us. All right. Now, with that being said, the only reason why Satan is able to operate in the capacity that he operates is because we don't know who we are. And he uses man to carry out his deeds in this earth, all right? We, knowing who we are and understanding that we are creating God's image and understanding that we have a mandate to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to which is just, you know, you can even look at lepers as cancer nowadays, to cleanse people with cancer. Let's just say that because, you know, leprosy was kind of like cancer back then, you know? So anyway, raise the dead, Cast out demons, all right? And we are supposed to be a cancer to the kingdom of darkness, if that makes sense. Because let me tell you something. When you begin to go around healing the sick, cleansing lepers, raising the dead, casting out demons, folks is going to want to know who your God is. Who do you serve? I want that there. That's what I want. I want to be a part of that kingdom because you're preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. And then you're giving um, demonstration of the kingdom of God. All right. Now, the, 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 the key to that is, like I said before, is one, you have to believe this. You have to believe that this is who you are. You have to believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that dwells in you. You have to believe that when Jesus said that he's going to be with the father and greater things that he done, you'll do those things. You'll do the things that he done and greater things will he will you do because he's going to be with the father. You have to believe this and you have to believe and understand that the cleaner you make this vessel, because this body is a temple for the Holy Spirit, the cleaner that you make this temple in this vessel, the more power it will radiate through it from the kingdom of God. Okay. The more that you separate yourself from the world, the more that you um, spend time with Yah, the more that you fast, the more that you pray, the more that you do these things, the cleaner this vessel becomes to the point where yo, this vessel is able to operate in the spirit world as well as the physical world, you know, without you even realizing that's what's happening to a certain extent. Let me give a little example. Okay. So since I've had the job that I'm at now, every day while I'm working, I'm able for eight to 10 hours a day, I'm able to listen to the word. I'm able to be taught by the Holy Spirit through different testimonies, through different uh, whatever the Holy Spirit leads me to, to, to study in the, you know, through different people, through different people who lead me to, um, through different testimonies and all these things. I'm able to put that into my system through my ears because I'm able to listen to this stuff eight to 10 hours a day while I'm making my deliveries. All right. 
that becomes me spending so more and more time with 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 God. That becomes my 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 spirit man is being um, enlightened more and more and more because I'm hearing testimonies. I'm hearing different. I'm I'm hearing the way God move moves in different ways in different people. So, the reality of things spiritually is becoming more and more um, uh, real to me. All right, I'm able to see, like, when Moses, when when in the book of Exodus, when Moses. Uh, cast down the the staff and he became a snake and he began to move. You know, I'm beginning to see how God, we put God in a small box, but yet father is, he, he's, he's, he's so, he, there's so many elements. There's so many um, um, facets. There's so many um, dimensions of father that we have yet to tap into because when we hear something like Moses putting the staff down and then becoming a snake or um, we see where uh, a bud, where Aaron's bud ate up all the other snakes, it became a snake and ate up all the other snakes. We don't, correlate that with today we don't see God as doing those things as part in the Red Sea as today that was then we don't see that as now so with that being said if you can't see that he can't do that in your life he can only take you as far as you can see as far as you can believe but when you believe when you begin to believe that a person's arm can be reconnected or be grow out when by way of the Holy Spirit. When you believe this, when you begin to see that, look, what we think of as supernatural or miracles, these things should be natural to us. They shouldn't be supernatural. It shouldn't be something that we don't see every day. These things should be something that's natural to us. Healing the sick, seeing the sick get healed. It should be natural to us. It should be natural that even us ourselves, if we have sickness or we have something, it should be natural for, we should believe that, hey, you know, I got the spirit of God in me. Um, I, I, I'm healed. That should be natural to us. As that began to be natural to us, it begins to be a natural phenomenon that can occur through us. <sighs> you see? So when, you know, as when, when, when I first, and, and I got to use myself as an example, because when I first, understood how when when God first told me to write a book about my life and I know this is a story that y'all may have heard before and but you gotta understand that I gotta say certain things because other people's gonna watch this in the future and I know this so when I began to when 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 God told me to write a book about my life and everything he had done for me, and he told me that the Holy Spirit would show me, guide me, and teach me everything I needed to know, I had no idea of what it consisted of to write a book. I had no idea how this was going to happen. I had no idea at all. But I was so naive at that point because I had the naivety of a child. And I knew that I heard the voice of God. I knew I heard God talking to me and telling me to do these things. And so... I knew I just, I just did it. Okay. So when I say that, I just, when, when I first started it, I was trying to write the book and I had no concept of what to do, how to do. I, I just started trying to write and it did not work. 
And I spent um I spent weeks with trying to get something on paper and it just not it didn't work. Well, we was coming up on the end of that year, and at this point, <laughs> I had quit my job because I heard God tell me to write a book about my life and everything it done for me. And um now, did it marry me quit my job? I I don't know, but I stepped out there and I did. Uh, what my wife had said it married it, and eh, she probably wouldn't have, but she supported me to as, as much as she could <laughs> to a certain extent, and I did. Okay, so what happens? Um, I'm trying to write this book. It, nothing's coming to me. I don't know what to do. Some tells me to fast. We at the end of the year. I said, okay, I'm going to fast from the the last seven days of this this that that year of December into the, you know, into January. So I fasted. I fasted for seven days, no food, just water. Now, during that fast, I mean, I listened to the word. I can't, I can't tell you all that I did during that fast. But what I can tell you is that after I came out of that fast, when it was all said and done, it was downloaded into my system. What to do, how to do it, and I just began to, to write and I just began to type. And it's like, I just knew what to do super naturally. I knew how to put the book in chapters. I knew what to say, how to say it. I knew how to construct everything. I knew how to, I just knew, I just knew it. Like just, I just knew it. Like I, I can't tell you, I just knew it. It was just, I just knew when that happened. Let me tell you something that added a notch in my faith that I, I, I can't even explain to you because I knew with that right there, I said, well, if it worked for this and then the whole process of me writing that book, the Holy Spirit, I had to depend on the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, would I would sit at the, the, the computer, I would type, I would begin typing and the stuff would just flow to me of what to say and how to say it. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit sh showing me what to write and how to write it. It wasn't me. It's never you. You know, you have to always understand that it's not you. And that's what we get frustrated and mixed up about because we try to do these things and it's not us. Okay. It's the spirit of God in you. All right. So anyway, so I'm, I'm typing and then I would get to a point and and what I'm what what I'm talking about in this book, and it might be something that was a little that I felt like it was a little too much to tell. I didn't want to talk about that part of my life. This is why I'm such an open book as we talk in this because I've had to be that way because the Holy Spirit. There was things I w didn't want to talk about. Maybe it was something that happened to me in prison. Maybe it was something that happened to me or that I did, and I didn't want to talk about that. Maybe it was the fornication that I was in. Maybe it was the the uh, the level of of adultery that I committed. And I didn't want to talk about that, but the Holy Spirit would stop flowing. My flow would stop because I stopped right there and I didn't want to talk about that. And I wanted to talk about something else. The flow would stop and I would be like, you know, I would be stuck and I couldn't flow and, and I, it would go on. It might go on for, and I'm like a child. I was hard headed at the time. I'm thinking that I can, um, I can, uh, tell the Holy Spirit, what I am and what I ain't going to talk about. And he's going to be all right with that and just do what I say. Mm -mm. It, <laughs> it would not flow. And so then, okay, I, you know, I'm stuck be in, get out of my stubbornness and I would talk about what he wanted me to talk about, what he wanted me to say. And it would all start flowing again. All right. So in that time I with that, I learned that, you know, when, when I'm, when he's flowing and when I'm, when it's me, because when it's me, the flow stops, when it's him, the flow goes like water and it just flows out. All right. So I had to be dependent on the Holy spirit during that time. And this was back in 2012. All right. Now, with that being said, that led into other things because as, as time went on, if there was something that I did not know, what did I do? I did what I did before, except this time I might not fast it. I just prayed. 
because I knew that the Holy Spirit would be able to download into my system how to do things because it happened once it happened with the book. So therefore I began to, uh, um, I began to practice that. I began to practice that with everything. If there was something I did not know how to do, I would pray. I would pray for the, for, you know, Holy Spirit download into my system, how to do this as if I've been doing it for 50 years, or if I've been doing it, you know, as give me the spiritual wisdom and knowledge to know how to do this as if I've been doing it for 50 years or, you know, and it will work in everything that I did up until this day right now that we speak, I have built, I have, I have built a whole basement. I have built a whole house almost with praying before I did it. Now, mind you, I would have to watch things and, and, and I would, I would study certain things, but the knowledge downloaded into my system very fast, very rapid. Okay. Um, if I didn't know, know something about the car, I would pray about it, maybe watch a video or two. And I would go out there and I would do it. And this this has been going. This is it it, it, it can it stays consistent. The more I practice it, the more it becomes natural in my life. If that makes sense. You see? And and the more it becomes natural, the more it flows out into everything that I do. Even with me with God beginning to teach me about the kingdom of darkness. All right. This is a whole nother story, but I'm just saying up and you know, uh, maybe what up until like four years ago or so I had no idea about how the kingdom of darkness operated. But at, in that time, he's taught me so much through other, you know, ministers, through other people that he's brought into my life for me to, 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 to listen to their ministries and to eat and to, to glean off them and to learn. All right. Now, now, now I'm getting into something that's not about this. Let me, I'm, I'm now it's about, it's starting to get about me and I need to get out of that. But you see how quick that happened? Let, no, I need to go. I need to get out of that. I'm trying, I'm, I'm doing this so I can show you how the Holy Spirit wants to operate in your life. If he's not operating, operating in that, in your life, in that way, in that capacity already. I want, I'm trying to get you to see that we have to take the governor off of what we believed, how far we can go and how far we can do things. I'm trying to get you to, you have to know that this is in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the spirit that is dwelling in you. There are no limitations to what you can do if it is in the word of God, outside of the word of God, you shouldn't be doing those things. But if it's in this word, there's no limitations of the things that you can do. If Jesus did it, you can do it. And you're supposed to be doing it because you're supposed to be spreading the kingdom to everybody else. You are supposed to be a cancer to the kingdom of darkness. Every time what we call a miracle happens, that's a, another cancerous canker sore on the kingdom of darkness. Every time the Holy Spirit, we able to see miracles and we able to see people get healed and we able to see demons cast out people and stuff like that. That's a cancer to the kingdom of darkness. The same way that he has been a cancer to the kingdom of God by um, keeping God's people, keeping God's children from seeing who they are and seeing the power and authority that they have. He's been a cancer with that. Okay. We are supposed to be the same type of cancer to the kingdom of darkness. Excuse me. All right, let me let me keep going. All right. Uh, you have dominion in this earth. All right. May you be blessed of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has he given to the children of men. That's Psalms 115, 15 through 16. 
All right. That's the word. He's giving you this earth. He's giving it to the children of men. All right. Now, for a stint, we didn't have it because we gave it up. But when Jesus paid the price with his blood on the cross for us to become reconciled, to become children of Yah again, to bring us back to who we originally came for, to restore us to our rightful positions. We now have that authority over every power of the enemy, over every demon, over all demonic forces, over anything that operates in this earth. If it's not operating through the Holy Spirit, we have dominion and power over it, whether it be sickness, whether it be um, uh, whatever it is, we have dominion over it through Christ who lives in us. Okay. How do we bring that dominion out? We spend more and more time in his presence. We spend more and more time asking father, listen, teach me about this. Teach me how to maneuver and operate through this fallen world system. Teach me, Lord. Show me the truth. I want to know truth. I want to know the truth, Lord. Holy Spirit, bring me to, into all truth like it says in your word. Holy Spirit, I know you know this word better than anybody because you wrote it. You wrote it through men. So, Holy Spirit, teach me. And that's how we begin to operate on a level that is outside of this realm that we can see because right now most of the times we operating on the level that we can see and that level is um inferior to the level that we can't see when i say inferior that means that the level that we can see is below the level that we can't see and this is why we have a hard time as the body of Christ, because we operating from a level that we can see, but our adversary is operating from a level that we can't see, which gives him a head over us because we not operating from that same level. But when we begin to operate from a level that we can't see, we now have the upper hand over him. You see, it's all about perception. All right, let's continue. Who are you? From slaves of sin to sons of God. Let's, and let's look at Galatians 4, 1 through 6. It says, now I say that the heir as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And as because, and in because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through Christ. All right. So look, this goes back to us not understanding who we are. 
and us operating from a level that we can see. All right. When you operate from a level that you can see, you're operating as a slave to this system. All right. When you begin to operate from a level that you can't see, an example of that, when you begin to know in your heart and you believe it in your heart, because you can believe it in your head, but you got to believe it in your heart that through you, the Holy Spirit can heal the sick. Through you, through you, you see what I'm saying? Not you, but through your obedience and through your believing in him that is greater than you, that is greater than the world, but dwells in you, can do these things. When you begin to operate from a level that you see yourself healed, you don't see yourself from uh, the level that you can see, which may result in you seeing sickness within yourself. When you see yourself from the dimension of the spirit healed because the word says that he took all our sins, iniquities, and all our diseases with him. When he paid that price through his blood, which we talked about last week on the cross, when you begin to see that from the spirit, because remember I told you, remember I said last week that the currency of the spirit is blood. The There is no greater currency in the spirit than the blood of Jesus. So when you begin to see that blood, you being bought under that blood, you you are a part, you, you've been reconciled, you've been bought back under that blood, then that means that if you begin to see it from that perspective and that level, that means that there's no possible way that sickness can be in your body. And you have to see that and you have to know that and you have to believe that. Okay. But how do you get there? You get there through the time that you spend with him. You get there through relationship. You get there through him meaning more to you than everything in this world. At this point in my life, this world means absolutely nothing to me. I see it. It, it, it don't even, it don't even, uh, it's not even a drop of eternal life. I see eternal life now. I couldn't say that a year ago or maybe two years ago. I couldn't say that. I couldn't know. I couldn't say that a year ago. I didn't see it like that. But at this point right now with the time that I spent and me understanding how the spirit world works and how eternal life works and how eternity is just what it says, eternity. And you're going to spend one <laughs> You're going to spend the rest of eternity in one place or the other. That's become so real to me now that through testimonies, through the word and through the Holy Spirit, just showing me that's become so real to me now that nothing of this world matters at all. I look to eternal life with Christ. I don't want to look to, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to spend eternity living, uh, living a um, nightmare over and over and over and over and over every day. That's not what I want. And then I began to think of all the people who's passed on before me. And I began to think about the people who, you know, might not have accepted Christ before they died or might have died in the commission of uh, a transgression. And I think about, man, these people are spending eternity in condemnation, damnation. And then I think about how the love, how he loved me so much that he gave me the opportunity to be redeemed after I had done the, 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 the worst of worst. We look at certain people, 
you know, now and we we look at them as evil and wrong. And but no, I, I think about what I did. I took a life. And I was I was on my way to hell. If in that process that I did that, if somehow, some way that 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 police car that I was riding in during the after, after I had done that. Let's say that police car flipped over 20, 30 times or got into an accident where everybody in there, me, the police officers and everybody passed away. Do you understand? Right now, my soul would be being tormented in hell for eternity. If those bullets that hit me. Even after I, I I knew Christ, even after I, if those bullets, and but I wasn't living right, I was still living in sin because I didn't have the proper foundation. I wasn't taught the things that I'm taught, I'm teaching now. But if those bullets would have went a certain way or traveled a certain way, I would be in eternal damnation right now. That has become so real to me that I'm so thankful that he gave me the opportunity, he gave me the chance to do what he called me to do. Okay, that's enough of that, praise God. All right, let's 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 keep going on. We about to wrap it up here in about 15 minutes. Uh, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. All right. That's just another reiteration of you being who you are. You know, you cannot see yourself as a sinner. Don't see yourself as a sinner. Don't put that on you. Don't put that, that title on you. You know, and when we say sons, we, it's not, it's not, I don't mean that, well, let's just say sons and daughters. Okay. I mean, cause, but there is no, there's no, there is no gender in Christ. See, there is no, when you, when your soul leaves this body that it's trapped in right now, when your soul leaves this body, there's no gender. There is none of that. Okay. All right. Let's go. Same things. John 14, 12 through 14. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these, he will do because I go to my father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay. So this is telling you, the word is telling you, and just this is Jesus' words. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, that's one of the key factors, believes. This was the sig significance of Christ crucified. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also in greater works than these he will do. You have to believe you, it, it can't just be in your head. It's got to be in your heart. How does it get in your heart? By the renewing of your mind. How do your mind get renewed? By the things that you put into your ears. The things that you hear. The things that you listen to. The, 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 the teachings. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Same spirit. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies 
through his spirit who dwells in you. So you have to know and understand that the spirit that dwells in you gives life to this body. All right. With that being said, understanding that the blood that was shed for you brings healing to this body. Okay. There's nothing. See, you got to know that there's nothing that the spirit of God that is in you cannot do within you. You have to know that you have to believe it. You have to be able to see that. And you have to operate from that place. You cannot operate from a place of feelings. Oh, I feel achy. Oh, I feel this. Oh, I feel like I, oh, I feel, I feel, I feel. Oh, my body feels hurt. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel. You can't operate from a place of feelings. You have to go above the feelings and operate from a place of the blood that was shed in the spirit to buy you back to make you whole. Everything in you must line up with that when you believe it. Is it easy to do? <laughs> nope, not at all. I'm not saying it is. But the more that you practice it, the more that you listen to testimonies of people being miraculously healed, the more that you do this, the more that that gets into your system, the more that it gets into your heart and the more that your heart begins to grow that. Okay, let's keep going. All right, translate it into the kingdom of God. All right, Colossians 1 and 13, it says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Okay. Notice that the consequences of sin is death. And you have been redeemed, redeemed for those sins. So through his blood, you have life. But you have also, you have a choice. Even though you have life through his blood, if you continue to sin, it's going to result in death. If that makes sense. So even though I have life through his blood, if I'm, if I'm going to church every Sunday and I'm giving my tithes every Sunday, Sunday, which, you know, ties, we, that's a whole nother discussion. We ain't going to go into that. But if, even if I'm doing, I'm doing everything that religion is telling me to do and telling me that, Hey, I'm okay. Everything's okay. Hey, you, you just accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. That's it. You ain't got to do nothing else. God loves you. You're going to heaven. All right. Now his blood redeemed me. But if I continue in sin, let's say, I'm I'm I, I'm under this illusion that I can continue to do everything that I want to do, and God has forgiven me, even though I continue to sin and do those things before a just and almighty God. And I use fornication. That's one of my my great. That's it's it's easy. It's just, it's just easy to use fornication because a lot of people are in fornication, <laughs> and you know that just it hits home sometimes. And um, that's one of the things that. Um, we have been led to believe that it's okay. Just use a condom. It's okay. Just, you know, it's okay. Even in church, you know, it's it's okay. But if I'm transgressing against God with that, with fornication, it does not matter that I was redeemed through his blood. If I continue in that fornication without repenting and without renewing my mind and changing my ways, then on the day of judgment, when this body goes back to the dirt and the spirit goes back to the one who gave it, which is God, and your soul is now under judgment in front of a just God, I'm going to let you be the judge of what's going to happen. But this stuff is not taught. 
And this is where we kind of miss it. And we need to know this, you know. All right. But I, I got a little side note down here. It says, before you were brought into the kingdom of God, you were you were your stepdaddy's child. <clears throat> you were your step, <clears throat> excuse me. You were your stepdaddy's child. You have the DNA of your original father, but you were being raised by your stepdaddy and taught ways and taught his ways. So these are the only morals and way of life you knew. Okay. Uh, that makes sense for itself. You know, you had the DNA of your, you, when we were born, we had the DNA of our father, but we was being raised by, you know, at that time, your stepdaddy. All right. You can call it what you want, but that's who you was being raised by until you have an understanding of who you are and whose you are. All right. Let's go. Let's, let's, uh, let's, um, I think we're going to stop here, right here at Romans at this one, because this is a good place to stop. I think it says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right. So. This is just letting us know that, um, you know, we have to see our bodies as a living sacrifice, put it on the altar. When I say that, I say we must we must crucify our flesh daily because our flesh never gets saved. This body never gets saved. This body is going to continue to want to fornicate. This body is going to continue to want to lust. This body is going to continue to want to do everything that it was that that, that when it fell under sin, it 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 was uh uh create it was it 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 wants to do, which is, has a sin nature, and we must crucify it daily. The body is selfish. It wants the things that it wants and it creates a, um, it creates, a, a avenue in you to be selfish and want to do the things that you want to do, but not what God has called you to do. It wants, it does, it doesn't want to, um, sacrifice itself and it doesn't want to, um, give itself to Jesus. It doesn't want you to give yourself totally to Lord, Lord Jesus becoming your Lord and Savior, Lord over your life. All right. The body does not want that. The flesh does not want that. And it will fight you tooth and nail to keep you from doing that, which is one of the reasons why we fast. Fast is simply um, putting the body under, denying it, saying, look, no. I mean, my spirit is in control. You can't get what you want. You're not going to get what you want. And the more we do that, the more our spirit man be becomes <clears throat> uh, sensitive to the things of the spirit. All right. I mean, let me see what my next slide is. Okay. This is a good place to stop. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All right. <clears throat> we kind of touched on that last week a little bit, or one of the weeks. It says, therefore, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. It says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we don't have to worry, but that don't tell us not to prepare. All right. And as you begin to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you will begin to prepare for, because you'll begin to see the things that's coming. All right. Spiritually. And when you begin to see the things that's coming spiritually, man, you have no it, it's like you you have no 
um, you, it's like you automatically begin to prepare. It's like something clicks on inside of you saying, look, I'm showing you what the things are to come. I'm showing you what's coming. So prepare. All right. And we talked about that um, in one of the, 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 the last times. So with that being said, I, 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 I want to leave with one, one, one last thing about how the more you begin to um, operate from a spiritual level and the more you begin to stop seeing things from what we can see physically and the more that you begin to draw closer and closer and closer to our father, the more that you begin to make Jesus Lord over your life, you know, it don't happen in a day, you know, it happens. The, the, he's grace. It's his grace and his mercy. And it happens a little bit at a time. The more, the more you draw closer, the more, the flesh is crucified, okay? And the more that you allow the Holy Spirit to maneuver and operate in your life, the more you become, uh, um, the more you become uh, conscious of the Holy Spirit and the more that you become, um, you have more of a, a, a sense, activity to the Spirit, period, the Holy, the, the, the Spirit world, period. And I've noticed that the more that I believe in the things of the Bible, everything, and the more that I see Father outside of a box that we've placed him in through religion, the more that I see the dimensions of him, because in this lifetime, we could never see the dimensions of God. We could never, it's, he, Think of a beach with all the grains of sand. The only thing that we tapped into, and that's God, all them grains of sand, the only thing that we've tapped into is one little kernel of that sand. That's how, that's how vast he is. But the more we begin to yield to that and the more we begin to understand that and the more we begin to take him out of this box, the more we begin to say, hey, supernatural, the things that I saw as supernatural things should become natural in my life. The more that we do that and draw closer, the more that our spirit begins to become sensitive to things of the spirit give a little example so me and my wife went into a house yesterday we were showing the house for um a couple and when i walked into that house like i could feel that I, it, it was just the house for one the house was nasty and and we were like this house shouldn't even be on the market holes in the walls it was just nasty the floors everything was about this house was just nasty and I felt a nasty presence in that house. I felt an unclean spirit in that house. I could feel it. I can't explain to you, but I could feel it to the point that I didn't even want to go no farther than the front room. Even though as after we had walked through the bottom, you know, rooms and stuff like that, I didn't even want to go upstairs because I just, it felt, an unclean spirit. I felt that unclean spirit dwelling in that house. I felt it. I could feel it. And it's been that way with different things. Um, it's just a you just I, I just I'm able to feel things. I'm able to 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 just have a certain knowing, you know. And it, I've been in many houses before that was nasty, that was tore up, that didn't even have no drywall on the on the on the on the walls, but I didn't feel that feeling that I felt yesterday inside that house. And see, that's when the Holy Spirit begins to teach you how to recognize certain feelings, certain you know um, when you have a certain uh, uh, notion. Because I can walk into somewhere and I can feel the presence of God there. I can feel happiness. I can feel you know. I can feel a certain that 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 you know. I can feel a presence of God in a place. Um, so 
And I just, I'm just, and I got more examples of that, but I need to cut this. I need to cut this right here because I don't want to go on and on and on. Because the whole thing of this is to show you that we are the same. Like we've been given the same opportunity. There's nothing, there's, you are, you have everything that the word says you have inside of you. You're no different than me. I'm no different than you. Our callings may be different, but the overall goal of each one of our callings is the same, to preach and teach the kingdom of God, to help the lost become found, to help the lost find their way, to be seekers of truth and to, to, to illuminate that truth and to, you know, um, heal the sick, to cleanse lepers, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. I know when we say that, raise the dead, your mind don't even let you go to that place because there's been a religious governor set on your mind because you haven't been taught that those things can happen. But Jesus told you, you're going to do these things. You should do these things. This is how you should be operating. Okay. So we've got to take that governor off our mind and we've got to go past 10 miles an hour. We've got to go past 15 miles an hour. We got to speed this thing up because the, 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 your spirit, man, is you have no idea what this thing can do. Okay. Operating under the right spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. And with that being said, I'm going to end this thing. I'm going to cut it off now. And um, anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Um, did I hit everything kind of like, did I make sense? Because I don't know. I told you at the beginning, <laughs> I was just going to flow. And I was just going to pull out whatever he told, whatever it came out. I was going to let him pull it out. Um. So hopefully I did that and I made sense and I didn't confuse anybody. If I confuse anybody, let me know. And I'll try to unconfuse with anything that I said. Um, with that, um, I'm going to stop okay, the share. So I'm, I'm I'm, not, okay, you can I'm, stop. I'm, yeah, um, let me stop the recording. Yeah, let me stop the recording. Uh,